Hi there. Now, when you're working with histograms, one question that does tend to crop up and seems to cause a few problems is this type where you're given the width and height of a particular class interval, say in centimeters, and then asked to find the width and height of another class interval. So that's the aim of this video, just to show you how you handle these kinds of problems. Let's say we take a general histogram where we've got, say, two class intervals, CW1 and CW2. And the lengths of each of these two class intervals are, say, L1 units, could be L1 centimetres, and L2, say, centimetres. The heights of them, H1 and H2, let's say are measured in centimetres, and they've got corresponding frequency densities, FD1 and FD2. So when we're working with problems like this, all we need to do is just set up ratio equations. By that, I mean that if we were finding, say, the heights h1 or h2, we can form an equation like this, and that is that the ratio of those heights, h1 to h2, would be exactly the same as comparing the corresponding frequency densities, frequency density 1 divided by frequency density 2, a simple ratio equation, which we could then rearrange for any of these unknowns. When it comes to working with the lengths of the class intervals, then we can do a similar thing. We can set up a ratio equation there. We can say that when we compare length 1, the length of the class width 1, when we compare it to the length of class width 2, it's going to be equal to that class width 1 when compared to the class width 2. So for, again from this equation you'll be able to find out any unknown. So it's important then that you remember to work with these kinds of equations, these ratio equations, as I'll demonstrate now in this next question here. So we've got the lifetime of a bulb in hours. It's given in this table here. And if the width of the 95 to 105 class is 2 centimetres and the height is 9 centimetres, we've got to find the width and height of the 105 to 130 class. Now, before we can work out the heights, what we need to do is to work out the frequency densities. So we're only really interested then in this second and third class intervals. So just put FD for short, frequency density there. And remember, to get the frequency density, all we need to do is divide the frequency then by the class width. And so for this one here, it's going to be 12 divided by a class width of 10. So that's going to give us 1.2. And then for the frequency density for this one, we got the frequency divided by the class width of 25. So 16 divided by 25 gives us 0 0.64. So they're the two important frequency densities that we need to work out. Now, what I would encourage you to do is to draw a sketch. I find it helps to simplify the problem. And Here's a sketch then of this histogram here with just the two class intervals from 95 to 105 and 105 to 130. So you've got the class width from 95 to 105, we're told is 2 centimetres, and the height is 9 centimetres. Its frequency density is 1.2, and the frequency density of this interval from 105 to 130 was 0.64. So we've got to find the width, which I've called W, and the height, which I've called H, for this class interval, 105 to 130. So if we're looking to get W, first of all, let's just put a subtitle in here. For W, the width W, then all I need to do is set up that ratio equation. And that will be the width here, W, 
compared with the width of this one, which is 2, equals, and then we just compare the class widths. So I started with this interval, so I've got to go from 105 to 130, which is a width of 25, okay, compared with this class width, 95 to 105, which is 10. So rearranging this for w, w will equal 25 over 10 multiplied by 2. And that comes to 5. So it's going to be 5 centimeters. What we're basically saying is that this width is 2.5 times this width when you compare them. Okay, 25 units class width compared to the 10 units of class width here. Okay, and that's two and a half times, so it's got to be two and a half times that too. So the other thing we've got now is to work out h. Okay, so let's just put here for h, that height. And for this, we set up another ratio equation. So we just compare h with the corresponding height in centimeters, which was 9 for that other class interval. And then this is going to be the same as comparing the frequency densities. So it's got to be the 0 0.64, which corresponds to the h, 0 0.64, compared with 1.2. Okay. And again, rearranging this equation, multiplying both sides by 9, gives us h equals 0 0.64 over 1.2, and that's multiplied by 9. And that comes to 4.8. 4.8 then centimetres. So I hope that's given you some idea anyway on how to tackle those kind of problems. All right?